I said at the top, I keep telling you, we're in an almost unfathomable moment here. Right now, we're almost totally hostage to the economy and what the Federal Reserve does to contain inflation. But we don't have a clear picture of how that's going to play out. Hey, we don't even know what's going to happen tomorrow at 830 with the CPI. Trying to speculate is a fool's game, but that doesn't mean it's not important to have an informed worldview. At the same time, we're headed into what could be an ugly earnings season, but we don't know for sure how ugly it will be and which sectors it will be most ugly. Hey, maybe some of them won't be bad at all. At times like this, when it's really tough to get a read on the big picture fundamentals without being emotional, I like to fall back on the charts, as you know, the technicals, because at least they can give us a more quantitative, less emotional sense of what's going on. And that's what's needed in a supercharged environment. We've had a couple of really great days. Everyone's getting very excited. So tonight we're running an off-the-chart special edition with the help of our friend Larry Williams. He's that legendary technician and market historian who's been the top expert in the space since I was struggling my way through puberty. Well, I wasn't. I didn't really struggle. <laughs> All right. Larry's written over a dozen books and created a host of his own proprietary technical indicators, which you can find on his website, which is ireallytrade.com. He's a master of creating forecasts. His 2023 forecast is now available on the website. If you want to see more, it's always worth doing. It's an amazing read. Most important, though, his record for us has been spectacular. Williams nailed the COVID bottom in April of 2020 when pretty much everybody expert was running away, chicken little, you know, that kind of thing, even as the market had really bottomed. Since then, he's made a series of eerily accurate calls that have consistently made you money. So we couldn't resist going back to him again for 2023 special look to see what he's saying. So what's he see going forward now that we've entered the new year? You know what? Let's do what I like to talk about, a group that has become unfathomable. Let's start with FANG, the old acronym for Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, and Google. Although Facebook's now Meta and Google's now Alphabet. We in Mad Money actually created this acronym over a decade ago when these stocks relentlessly led the market higher. For many years, they were tremendous leaders. They made people fortunes. There's a reason the acronym caught on. But last year, the fangs totally collapsed. It only got worse toward the end of the year. While the overall market bottomed on October 13th, as I said at the top, the fang stocks kept working lower, frustrating investors who stuck around too long. Remember my take. The fangs used to be as sec secular growth stories to need the economy that could deliver great numbers no matter what. Even during a slowdown, we assumed they could keep roaring because they well, they were taking so much market share from their old-fashioned competitors. And that was absolutely true five or ten years ago. But there's only so much market share to take. And when the economy slows, well, look out now. The fangs have become the old line incumbents, I think. They originally sought to replace them. Now they are them. That means they're no longer secular growth stories. They're more cyclical growth stories that are hostage to the broader economy, especially the advertising-driven ones like Meta and Alphabet. They've also got the up-and-coming competitors of their own to fend off which makes things very difficult. It's not an easy thing to talk about these stocks anymore. As this new reality has shown up in the numbers, their stocks have been pummeled. But these are still huge companies that are weighed, weighted very heavily in the S&P 500. And they're still, so what can I say? They, look, when you talk to people, they're still very popular among home gamers, and they punch above their weight. And lately, things have been rough. Check out the daily action in all four original fang names. As William sees it, Netflix is the new leader of the gang of four. Look at this, such a clear case, right? It began with the October bottom. Going to the bottom, the rest of the fang family was making new lows. Netflix was actually making a higher, a higher low. Not only did it, did it do better than its compadres, it did better than the broader averages, too. They had that really good quarter, and they also have a great slate of movies that's, and, uh, and series. And that's really, really helped them. That's why William says you need to disentangle the fang names. They no longer belong in the same boat. He's a big believer in buy what's strong, sell what's weak. Right now, Amazon and Alphabet, despite today's action, are weak. And their stocks have rebounded in recent days along with the rest of the tech. But let's not get too far ahead of ourselves, even though we do own these for the charitable trust. Meanwhile, Netflix is very strong, with meta platforms somewhere in the middle. To Williams, this is not a case where the laggards will catch up. If you want fang exposure, he thinks this chart's screaming that you should stick with Netflix or maybe meta, but definitely not Amazon or Alphabet. Next up, how about Larry's forecast for the broader stock market? First, you need to know where we are coming from. So take a look at the daily chart of the action, the S&P 500, during late 2021 and early 2022. This is incredible. Williams points out that every single major rally during this period, and you're feeling it, aren't you, lasted for what? For 24 days. 
24 days. 24 days. How is that happen? Isn't that amazing? That's it. Every single time. Technicians often look for these symmetrical moves. And while it never is never able to really explain why, it doesn't really matter. I mean, look, it can't, it is not random. These they, they did not throw darts. This is not just pain. It's not a Jackson Pollock. And look, this pattern held up during the second half of last year. Things got really ugly. Check it out. We had a 24-day rally in July. In August, a lot of people got sucked in right there, okay? And then another 24-day rally where, well, if you stayed with the fangs, you did terrible. But some of the stocks actually held in there, the industrials. Like I talked about at the top. So where are we now? Look at the recent action in the S&P 500. We've just started a new uptrend here. And according to Williams, if the 24 trading day pattern holds, this move should keep going until February 3rd. And he wouldn't be surprised if it lasts even longer. Because Williams thinks we're in the early choppy phases of a bull market. To him, most of the bad news already got baked in last year, which sets us up for a better time in 2023. Now, here's a bull. Here's a guy who's actually bullish. He's not listening to Mike Wilson and all these other people come on and say, listen, it's the end of the world and the Fed this, that. He likes it. Finally, the guy likes to make all sorts of forecasts based on cycles that seem to repeat themselves. For example, here's the S&P 500 in black with the short-term cycle forecast in red. If the cycle holds and most of the time I see his cycles hold, then he sees the S&P moving higher with a slight dip or stumble at the end of this month. Then he sees blast off. That's right, blast off to an early March high. So we're right here. Looks like we come down a little bit here, and then, well, I mean, do you want to be in that or not? I don't want to miss that move. I know that even with the nice rebound over the last weeks, the prevailing attitude on Wall Street remains overwhelmingly negative. But, man, it does not pay to bet against this man, Larry Williams, especially when he's making a bold contrarian call like this one. Those are his best. Here's the bottom line. The charts as interpreted by Larry Williams, the dean, the dean of this kind of analysis and of historical analysis of the market, suggests that the market could have a very nice run over the next couple of months. And there's at least one bang named Netflix that should keep working right along with it. That money's back in Coming up, he's a lean, mean screen machine. Kramer shares results from a stock screen you can't afford to miss. Next. 